wanted to ruin a white shirt. <laughs> Guy called us up this morning and asked if we did aluminum welding. Nine times out of 10 when they ask that, it's something automotive related. So this is an intercooler that has a crack in it, which is rather surprising. This is apparently out of his, I think he said it was a truck mm -hmm. that he actually daily drives. So he's like, how fast can you get it done? So what happened is this thing cracked right along this weld seam, which is pretty impressive actually, because those welds don't look any different really than the rest of them. So if it cracked there, who's to say it's not gonna crack anywhere else? But intercoolers are interesting. Intercoolers are meant to cool down the charged air from the turbocharger before it goes back into the engine because cooler air is more dense Denser air has more oxygen. The more oxygen you get into an engine, the more power it makes. So that's the point of an intercooler. The air comes in, these are called end tanks, and the air flows through these channels here. Mm. And then, of course, the ambient air flows through the fins this way. Cool. So it's an air-to-air -air intercooler. The cool air is cooling down the hot air, or rather the hot air is giving its energy to the cold air mm. from a higher energy state to a lower energy state. Ah, somebody's a scientist. <laughs> no, <Nope>, public school. <laughs> so the right way to fix this, like with most crack, metal crack repair, you have to establish an end point for, for the crack at each side. So what I'm probably gonna do is drill a hole, kind of find where the crack is, go another half inch, maybe to this corner, drill a hole there to terminate it. And I'll probably drill a hole, maybe the last big glob of weld, like maybe up here to establish endpoints so it can't spread anymore. And then I'll grind this down, kind of open the crack up to give me a place to put some weld in there. And then we'll clean it really well because this thing is soaked in oil and aluminum is a reactive metal, which means it likes to be very clean. I'll probably use some of our rock mount aluminum wire because this stuff is pretty wild. Did you say rocks? The rocks and this stuff here. Rock mount uh, alloys are pretty awesome for repair stuff like this. They have a lot of silica in there. I think there's some magnesium in there. It just flows really nice and it works on dirty castings, things that, because aluminum's pretty porous, so it, is, it absorbs things like oil and gas and whatever. But we'll clean it as good as we can. You could probably do this with your regular 4043 additive, but if you got rock mount stuff, you might as well use it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll let Walker get back into the office. I'll take this. Ooh, wow. What? Uh, oh no. <laughs> I took your job. Bye. Don't show me. <laughs> anyway, so today on Lift Dark Studios, we're going to weld a broken intercooler with the HTP TIG welder. Ooh. Whee! Whee! Okay, see you in a minute. See you in a minute. Bye. Bye. All right, I'm going to start with a little acetone bath just to clean up the area some. Get a sense of what's going on here. All that stuff on the aluminum. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get a drill bit. I'm gonna drill a hole right in here. Hmm, I'm gonna use a punch because I just scratched it. Sorry, man. All right, now I'm gonna step up drill bit size to a quarter inch, which I can fill with weld, no problem. Completely open up that seam. Okay, so I've got my end points completely established and now I'm gonna cut kind of just into that crack all the way along this seam. So for this application, it doesn't really matter, but I have these CGW aluminum cutoff wheels. So I'll be using that for this. So now I'm going to use an aluminum flap wheel to clean this up a little bit. And then I'll wire wheel it, I'll acetone it, 
and we'll set up for welding. All right, we've got a, got a nice place for weld to live in here. See that? Nice and open. So it should be pretty straightforward now. Just gonna give it, uh, give it a blow with the air and then wipe it down with acetone and then we'll set up the HTP TIG welder to do some aluminum welding. All right, so let's go through my, my drawers of stuff here. Let's set up the, uh, the torch for aluminum. So I'm gonna reach in here in my uh, Furic gas lens kit and I'm gonna grab this number eight ceramic cup and I'm gonna take the FUPA 12 off of here and put this on because I think that's gonna be plenty. That's gonna be plenty for the aluminum. Aluminum doesn't need a ton of gas, and uh, I'm just gonna put a fresh grind on this. When Peter was here helping us acclimate to the HTP Invertig, he made it very clear that uh, gone are the days where you really need to ball your tungsten. So I'm putting a point on it and we're gonna send it as long as I don't lose it in the cup. So there's my general setup for that. You know, 330 seconds gray serrated tungsten, Furic number eight gas lens. Uh, we're running 100% argon at probably, let's see, shout out to Furic for having this. Number eight cups, 20 CFH ought to do. Come over here to the, the Invertig. If you just hit the settings button, there's a purge button right there. Go back here and turn this down to 20. Hit purge again to stop. We'll go to mode, TIG 2T pedal, and we're gonna hit this button. We'll go to AC, standard. Let's do standard square wave, high frequency. So probably do yeah, 120 hertz, 75% balance. I'm gonna crank this up to 220 amps because I'm using the pedal and I want access to all that heat. So let's see how that does over here on the part. Aluminum still kind of makes me a teensy bit nervous. So I always like to at least light up a little bit, strike the arc on a piece of scrap just so that I know I have everything dialed in because usually, you know, I don't want to mess this up. So let me make sure I know what I'm doing. Huh. I have a piece of stainless filler rod in my hand. Glad I caught that. This is what I need. Let's try this here. Looks pretty good, a little dirty, but I also didn't clean this at all. Let's see what we got here. All right, don't move. Oh boy, this is dirty. You can smell the oil burning off the inside. I need to turn up the balance. A little more gas. So, a note. A note on AC balance from the man himself. Peter and the other person that wrote this. AC balance. <clears throat> balance refers to the time that the arc spins above or below the zero line, which not all can control below the zero line, HTP does. So it's the percentage that the uh, arc spins at electrode positive versus electrode negative. If you set your balance at 50%, your current would come out of the material and go into the torch for half a second and then go the opposite for the other half of the second. That's just one, that's at one hertz as an example, half the time. Most people consider between 60 and 80% balance to be the sweet spot. With the balance set too low, the tungsten balls, and with the balance set too high, the weld bead turns gray, flat, and dull. So I'm gonna, insufficient cleaning, I'm gonna go down to 60. We're at 65, uh, balance is set at 65%, and I've got a little bit more gas flowing. Let's see if this cleans up. Not at all. Something's wrong. That stick out, a little more gas coverage. Definitely helps. Really don't want a whole lot of stick out with aluminum. Mm -hmm. Now we're cruising. 
Now we're cruising. Too much heat. What do you mean? I'm trying to figure out why. I, I have a feeling it was, uh, I want to know how much boost pressure he's running. It was pretty oily. Oh, it's filthy. I've had to turn the balance down to 60 and uh, turn the gas up and get like no stick out. You know, less to do with consistency and more to do with heat. These look kind of cold. If there's anything I'm taking from it, like that's sitting kind of proud, mm -hmm. and it's not like, doesn't look like it's wetting in all the yeah, way. That to me would be the biggest killer. And if you looked at it from the inside, there was like almost no evidence of well inside. Uh -huh. Like you didn't get any of that shivering kind of look. Like it right. Was like cool yeah, so it, it was a cosmetic job, not a structural. Because, like, see how much lower this is sitting than that? Uh -huh. Like this right here? Like, I'm burning it in. I'm fairly certain you're going to be able to see that on the inside. Oh, yeah. All right, well, there you go. There's my attempt. Um, the material was filthy. It was oily, and it kind of fought me the whole way. But uh, if it was new material, I could have done a, a cleaner job. But I was just trying to get a lot of penetration and really fix what was what was broken there. So that'll that'll definitely serve the purpose. I changed my mind. I'm gonna do one more cosmetic pass because I want it to look better. Suck so much. That's better. That looks a lot more consistent. So now I've got like a root pass basically and then an upper pass that just makes it look better and it actually sits at the same height as the rest of it. So it looks more consistent. Now we're done. Ready for pickup. Thanks for watching. We have merch for sale. We love you if you bought some already. And it's a great way to support us. Buy some cool stuff for yourself for the summer or a loved one or someone you you, if you hate our design, buy it for someone you don't like and send it to them as like a, yeah, you really showed them. But that's nobody, because everybody loves our design. Everybody right, does love our design. Yeah. You, you, you guys like it, right? <laughs> Tell me you like it. Tell, Tell me you like it. it. Tell, Spike Tell me you like it. Tell, Tell me you like it. Tell, Tell me you like, like it. it. Okay, anyway, LiftArcStudios.com. <laughs> Lift Lift Thank you. Love you. Bye.